Gabon's uh, Technopolis would be ready for commissioning by March next year. The contractor says the setting up of the horizontal infrastructure would be finalized by the end of the Technopolis is a key flagship project of Kenya's Vision 2030 economic development portfolio. Sitting on 5,000 acres of land is Konza Technopolis, Kenya's first smart city and one of three in Africa. Anchor tenant of the Konza Smart City, the Kenya Advanced Institute of Science and Technology is expected to be a catalyst of innovation, benchmarking the Korean experience. We've all watched several exciting YouTube videos published several years ago showcasing Konza Smart City as the would-be Silicon Valley of Africa. Back in 2013, when the project was launched by former President Mwai Kibaki's government, we were all feeling inspired by this idea of a silicon savannah. Kenyans and other Africans were very thrilled by the idea of having a smart city built right here in Africa. Konza was going to be a blueprint for future smart cities on the continent. And of course, being the tech enthusiast I've always been, I just couldn't wait for it to be completed. My friends and I would regularly daydream about opening up business offices in the smart city next to Google or Safaricom as soon as it was ready. As the official Konza information website claims, the city is supposed to be home to a modern technology university state-of-the-art light assembly manufacturing industries, software development companies, data centers, hotels, international schools, hospitals, modern residential areas, a science park, shopping malls, a world-class convention center, and other projects you would expect to find in a smart technology city. No wonder some of the world's biggest tech companies such as Google, Samsung, Huawei, and Research in Motion, the company that builds the BlackBerry, had expressed a huge interest in opening regional offices in the Techno City. Professor Bitangen Demo, who was the Minister of ICT when the project was launched, had hinted that the project would be completed in less than five years. But today, about 10 years since the project was announced through a highly publicized video showcase, we are yet to see any of the amazing things we were hyped up about. One look at the physical site of the project along Mombasa Road and you will be forgiven for thinking it has just begun. The beautiful city skyscrapers, parks and futuristic buildings that we saw in the hype video remain a figment of our imagination. They just don't exist. The most noticeable thing that currently exists where the proposed Konza Technopolis is supposed to be standing today is a vast emptiness. So what happened to Konza Technopolis project? Where is it today? Why is it so far behind schedule? And will it ever come to fruition as promised over a decade ago? Before we talk about that, let's take a look at the entire project timeline. Let's go back to the very beginning. In 2008, the government of Kenya approves and announces the Konza Technology City concept as one of the main projects in its Vision 2030 plans. Through Konza, Kenya seeks to be one of the best business process outsourcing and information technology enabled services hubs in Africa by 2030. BPO and ITES industries include data processing, data warehousing, IT help desk services, software and app development, enterprise resource planning or ERP, telecommunication services, and so on. In 2009, the government commissions the International Finance Corporation or the IFC, which is a member of the World Bank, to conduct a feasibility study and prepare a proposal on the development and implementation of a world-class technology city to help Kenya benefit from the rapidly growing BPO and ITES industries. In 2012, the Ministry of Information, Communications and Technology, under the leadership of Professor Bitangen Demo, reaches out to New York City-based HR and A Advisors, Inc., to prepare a detailed business plan and master plan for Phase 1. In 2013, 
President Mikey Baki breaks ground in Malili to kick off phase one of the Konza Techno City project. At the same time, the Konza Technopolis Development Authority, or KOTDA, is appointed as the body that will oversee the project. 2014, infrastructure and parcel development guidelines begin. 2015, roadworks and preliminary earthworks begin. 2016, a Kenya Electricity Transmission Company Limited substation is completed at Konza City to provide power to future residents. The Kenya Advanced Institute of Science and Technology signs up for these services. In 2019, first ever building on site is built, the Konza Complex. Six years after President Mwaiki Baki launched the project, the Konza Technopolis project has only managed to put up one building. So where are we today? According to the official Konza website's projects page, only one project has been completed in Konza, the Konza complex. That's the building that houses the KOTDA offices. The website also claims that a few other projects are ongoing. These include the Kenya Advanced Institute of Science and Technology University, which is inspired by South Korea's Korea Advanced Institute of Science and Technology, but there's no sign of futuristic buildings under construction to support these claims. There have been videos on YouTube showcasing bulldozers moving earth and digging terraces, workers busy working on underground tunnels, which is an indication that the horizontal infrastructure is in progress, although slowly. These underground tunnels are the ones that will hold the city's power lines, fiber optic cables, sewage, water pipes, and so on. But from the comments I've read on most of these YouTube videos, Kenyans have grown weary and tired of the slow pace of the project. Judging by these comments, it seems Kenyans have moved on. So now, why is the project so far behind schedule? Number one misplaced priorities. Back in 2013, the new government, instead of keeping its end of the bargain and pumping in the 10% funding it had promised when the project was starting off, decided to go to China and borrow huge loans to build the SGR. Konza City was supposed to be a public-private partnership project, which would have been a win-win for both the government and private investors. Both the government and investors were only supposed to keep their end of the bargain and pour in the funds they had agreed on. The government was to kick off the project by providing 10% of the cost to encourage investors, but it did not. Konza was going to create 20,000 jobs for Kenyans and operate as a special economic zone under the Special Economic Zone Act. But thanks to misplaced priorities by the previous government, this dream has not even risen above ground. 10 years later, we are still working on the foundational underground infrastructure and we can only see one building on site, which houses the Konza Technopolis headquarters. The second reason, government bureaucracy and red tape. In 2012, the National Land Commission or the NLC, which is the government body that manages public land, insisted that any corporates interested in setting up offices at Konza Technopolis should follow the old bureaucratic process of acquiring public land in Kenya, which is a process that can take years to complete. In short, the NLC became a bottleneck to the land acquisition process, and many of the foreign tech companies that had been interested in setting up offices in Konza Technopolis found this process too cumbersome and pulled out. Number three, the brains behind the project are no longer part of the project. Konza Technopolis was the brainchild of, among others, Professor Bitangen Demo and President Mwaiki Baki. The project was conceptualized in 2008 and launched in 2013 when Kibaki was serving in his final year at the State House. Bitangen Demo was the visionary tech savvy minister serving as the head of the ICT ministry. When Kibaki's presidential term ended in 2013, so did Professor Demo's term as the Minister of IT. 
Professor Ndemo had brought so many positive initiatives in the ICT sector during his term. And I think when they left office, the vision and ideas they had for Kenya's Vision 2030 in terms of technology also left. The new administration came in with its own ideologies and plans and scrapped several plans of the previous regime, even the good ones. Kansa Technopolis became a secondary priority to a regime that wanted to do its own things in its own ways. We saw several PR stunts of opening ceremonies over the years at Konza, but nothing showed that Konza is actually a priority. Number four, other challenges. Let's not forget that a lot of African governments have for many years been struggling with several other economic challenges like corruption and low political benevolence. Even in the 21st century that we're living in today, many African countries still lack access to quality education, good roads, electricity, security, food and water, all because of political spitefulness and Kenya is no exception. We are yet to see political leaders who will genuinely value projects that benefit the entire population rather than valuing only the projects that benefit a few individuals because they've been offered some chai by foreign corporations that want to win tenders. Conclusion Konza Technopolis was conceptualized during former President Kibaki's government to be the flagship project of Kenya's Vision 2030. It was supposed to position Kenya as a leader in the BPO and the ITES sector and tap into the ever-growing opportunities that internet technology has to offer. It was going to position Kenya as a technological titan in Africa. But 10 years after a very hyped up official launch that got the entire continent excited, there is nothing tangible on site to show except one building, the Konza Complex. If the Konza Technopolis project continues moving at the snail pace we've seen for the last decade, we are not going to see the much awaited Silicon Savannah by 2030. And if the current government does not give Konza Technopolis the attention it needs to grow, other African smart cities like Rwanda's Kigali Innovation City or Nigeria's Eco Atlantic City will overtake Konza Technopolis in becoming Africa's preferred technology hub if they haven't done that already. President Ruto's government has inherited Chinese and other loans that need to be paid. It has millions of hungry Kenyans to feed due to the ongoing drought, a huge public service wage bill to pay, and many other government projects to fund. But with all this in mind, we also understand that Konza City is going to be beneficial for Kenya in the long run. We would like to see every new president take over and continue working on beneficial and finished projects initiated by their predecessors in the interest of Kenyans. It's not healthy for every new president to scrap projects that had already been started by the immediate former president if the projects are good for Kenyans. We don't need new presidents to start working on their own new but similar ideas just to prove they are original thinkers. This just leads to a pile of stagnated grandiose projects that cost Kenyans millions of tax money. During the former president's regime, we saw news of a family-owned dream city called Northlands start circulating online while Konza technology had been in stagnation for years. Why did the president ignore the Konza smart city dream if he was so convinced that a smart city is a good idea that he was willing to invest his own money in a family-owned smart city project. And recently, after President Ruto's visit to South Korea's smart cities, he vowed to create five new smart cities in Kenya, which will be given the status of special economic zones and have many of the amenities that Konza City is supposed to have. Does this mean we are now focusing on these five new smart cities to the detriment of Konza Technopolis? Or is Konza City going to be one of the five smart cities that Ruto is planning to develop? I guess we'll just have to wait and see, considering that Ruto became president barely four months ago. What do you guys think? Will Konza Technopolis be a priority to President Ruto? Or do you think it will be thrown into the periphery like it was in the previous government? Drop your comments below and let's see what you think.